Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do a, hopefully a short video uh, talking a little bit about collatograms and phylogenic trees. Um, first of all, I'm going to stop you right here. If you have not done the actual online activity dealing with this, please stop the video right now and go do that. All right. Go, go on. Oh, okay. All right. Now that you've done it, um, let me talk a little bit about it. the reason why I want you to do the activity first is because this is one of those topics where I think the best way to learn it is to actually just kind of experience it. Um, if I was doing this in the class, I would just kind of show you a couple examples of them and talk it through. It's kind of like pedigrees and the fact that you just kind of have to talk about them, look at a couple problems, think about it a little bit. And in fact, I actually think they're way easier than pedigrees. All right. So we're going to talk about collatograms and phylogenic trees. They're basically, for the most part, the same thing. There are very subtle differences between them but I'm gonna be using them relatively interchangeably. Um, if you take higher level classes, there'll be some differences. But, um, so we're gonna talk about a little cladograms here and basically how to read them. This is an evolutionary tree. So the idea being that if we have the five fingers of microevolution, right? Population or small population size, genetic drift, uh, non-random mating, mutations, gene flow, and natural selection, all of those things can lead to changes in a population's gene pool. Enough microevolution will lead to macroevolution or speciation, the development of a brand new species. If we have enough, you know, here in Dublin, we're doing isolation over the next hundred thousand over the next hundred thousand years, we might have enough changes within our population compared to, say, in China, that over a hundred, hundred thousand years, five hundred thousand years, we grown kind of in separate directions where we might not even be the same species. Now, of course, this is over a very long period of time. A lot of little changes over a long period of time glean new species. Species is defined as any organism that can mate and create a fertile offspring. All right, so not just mate, not just create an offspring, but an offspring that, you know, basically any two organisms that can have grandkids. Like a donkey and a horse can create a mule, but a mule can't have kids. So they, a donkey and a horse are not the same species, even though they can make a kid. Anyway, so if we get enough of this speciation, we start having this evolutionary trait where we start branching off. All right, where we start branching away from each other, this is what we call divergent evolution. That was one of your vocab words, was divergent evolution. It's where two species kind of start together and then they evolve in different directions, all right? Kind of on the tree, which we'll see some examples here. So I have on the screen here, um, there are two of the same. These are collatograms, and they're just two different ways of showing the same collatogram. All right. So the one on the left here. So we have um, six different, or sorry, eight different animals or species here, or uh, categories, kingdoms, uh, uh, organisms, um, and how we relate it is. So we always start from kind of the bottom, if you will. All right. So we start from the bottom here. Right. We start from the bottom here or the bottom here, and we read, in this case, up, or in this case, in that direction there. All right. Notice one thing about cladograms is they're not based on time. They are based on similarities. All right. And so every time, every once in a while, we hit one of these, uh, these little junctions, if you will. All right. These little points right here, um, or a split off right here. Anytime we get a split off, we call that a node. All right, and a node is just basically saying where um, a species split off and kind of different different directions. This is what we would call common ancestor. So I'm gonna actually I want to actually talk about the one on the right. That's actually one I'm a little bit more familiar with personally. So in this case here, there was some organism here, um, and it split off into two different directions. All right, microevolution led to different circumstances for the species, two different populations. One went in this direction and one went in this direction. This one here, a molt exoskeleton became, a molting exoskeleton, exoskeleton you shed, uh, became a favorable trait and thus kind of followed on this path until we led to another organism that then kind of split into two different directions. So lobsters and spiders are not the same species but they're pretty closely related because they both have that molted exoskeleton. And that dot right there, that one I just drew, this one right here, 
This is the common ancestor of lobsters and spiders. It's not that lobsters turned into spiders or spiders turned into lobsters. They share a common ancestor. Am I a great 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 grandparent that was neither lobster nor spider, but evolved into what we became lobsters and became modern day spiders. And that's a big thing about evolution, uh, especially when we talk about human evolution, people think we evolved from apes and like, that's not true. Ape, modern day apes and humans evolved from the same common ancestor. We had the same grandparents, you know, millions of years ago, but we've diverged and our evolution has been different. One path led to modern day humans, one path led to modern day primates. All right, so we have a common ancestor here. I'm just going to write CA for common ancestor. Now, these two organisms have a different uh, different features than, say, this all the way back down here at this common ancestor. All right, the other path or path ended up becoming vertebrates. Now, vertebrates are organisms with bony spines. All right, so, um, you know, any organism past this point right here on the path is going to have a bony spine which includes perch, flounder, lungfish, lizards, birds, and mammals. And we kind of keep doing that. So we have another, we reach another point here where we have some sort of organism that probably doesn't exist today. Millions of years ago, it split off. Some of them developed lungs and some of them devol or developed spiny ray fins. All right, those spiny ray fins, that organism eventually became what modern day perch and flounder. All right. And we can kind of keep doing this. You, you're, start, you're starting to hopefully see a theme here, though. You know, then we have another common ancestor here that has both lungs. This one here has both lungs, vertebrae, all right, but does not have molted exoskeleton, and it does not have fins. But this one here uh, broke off a little bit early and became modern-day lungfish, all right. But it, or uh, another set of the population be, have amniotic eggs. That means like laying eggs. I have like yolks in them, all right? And then that common ancestor broke off again. And now these ones here. So any organism that is near each other on this has similarities. Any one that, that node represents that common ancestor. So birds or lizards and mammals carry a common ancestor. Here, let me clear this a little bit. It's getting a little sloppy. All right, birds or mammals, which is us, right? And lizards, we carry, we have a common ancestor. It's that guy right there. I don't know what he looks like, but he was eventually one that branched off into two different things, right? But they're not as closely related as birds and lizards because they are more, they have a closer common ancestor because they both see UV rays. So we're starting to see based on traits we see is to the more traits you have, the more recent their common ancestor we have a relatively recent common ancestor with the chimpanzee because we have a lot of similarities. We also have the same similar, we also have a common ancestor with lizards and fish. It was just much longer ago because we have a lot of more, or a lot more differences, all right? So now this one on the left here, this uh, cladogram on the left is the same concept. It just uses this here, um, where here are the nodes. That's a node, node. Those all represent a common ancestor that typically don't exist anymore. It's just where that common ancestor, that population split. Again, causing divergent evolution. Divergent meaning kind of evolving in separate directions. The opposite being convergent evolution, where species kind of, they don't, mis people misconfuse, where they don't evolve into the same species. That would be crazy. But ones that, even though very distantly related, look a lot alike each other. Um, so, uh, they have a lot of similarities like, uh, dolphins and what uh, dolphins and sharks, dolphins and sharks look very similar to each other, but one is a mammal and one is a fish. They are not actually that closely related to each other, but they look the same. That is convergent evolution because they look the same, even though, because they have the same traits, but they're not really that closely related. All right. So. Uh, just want to kind of give another example here. Um, 
So here's a little bit more kind of zoomed out version of it where we're talking about the different kingdoms of life, um, where we have the prokaryota, or bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Um, it's just an older Latin way of spelling it. Um, I want to make sure, yeah, you guys can, hopefully you guys can see my screen here. Um, so here we have the different, on the right here, you notice that we have the different branching off of uh, the different organisms. Um, you notice that we're here at the top there on the top right is animals. And we have, um, we are pretty closely related to things like fungi and plants. Obviously it doesn't look like we are, but we do share a lot of same and common ancestors. Um, and we are much different than, say, um, some of these other, these are micro, or these are prokaryotes and prokaryotes. We're very distant related. But even though we're very distant related to bacteria, we share a common ancestor. That common ancestor is at that node. Now, that common ancestor looks nothing like us today, and it happened probably billions of years ago. And eventually, you get this enough of this of all of life, you get to this right here. Now it's a little fuzzy here, but this is a rough, very rough picture of the tree of life, a uh, cladogram of life, a phylogenic tree of life. All right, where we start all the way back here with a common ancestor, all the way over here. Um, and we get it at the very bottom here. Sorry, my marker is not working right now. And over time, we branched off, branched off, branched off, branched off, branched off, and it gets more and more um, divergent. We start branching. You notice some of the branches towards in the middle, uh, you see a lot of them in that kind of purplish red in the middle, the branches end. That's because those species became extinct, all right, until you get to the very end of it. And you, we're actually, it's kind of hard to see. We're all the way towards the very right, not the very last one, but we're on the very right over there. Um, and new branches are being made every day. Uh, not every day, I should say, because it takes a very long time, but you know, up to this day and the long period of time, um, relatively recently. Um, and so that's pretty much it. It's just, I experienced it, but it's just about being able to read and understand the similarities between different organisms and we make this pattern. Um, and so we see here, like I said, divergent evolution compared to convergent evolution. Um, so I just look at my notes, make sure there's anything else I wanted to say. Nope, I think we're pretty good here. So hopefully I just put a few things extra in context. If you did the online simulation, the rest of this should still feel pretty good after this. Um, otherwise, if not, make sure you message me. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, good luck on the practice and uh, good luck. And may the science be with you.